Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of our Savior, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the memorial of the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saints Joachim and Anne, which makes them, makes them the grandparents of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a saying from the scripture which can help us put into perspective the greatness of these two holy parents. You will know a tree by its fruit. And of course, the immediate and direct fruit of the marriage of Saints Joachim and Anne was the Blessed Virgin Mary, their daughter, which they conceived in their old age. And of course, through the Blessed Virgin Mary then, our Lord Jesus Christ, and through Jesus Christ, the Church. So, in a certain sense, we're, there are grandparents too. Great, 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 great grandparents. The Blessed Virgin Mary was the fruit then of the love of, these, of this man and this woman, but I would say not only of their love, because many parents love one another, but not all of them produce saints as offspring, let alone the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God. In a cert, to a certain extent then in Joaquin and Anne, we expect to find all of the human virtues that are present in the Blessed Virgin Mary. And of course, they're all present. Every virtue is present in the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, but I make a distinction between the natural and the supernatural because of course, supernatural virtues come from God even at times despite the lack of the parent's virtue. But grace always works on nature and presupposes nature, a nature that is disposed to receive these graces. And therefore the great virtues in Mary, those perfections of her natural goodness, which are further perfected by the fullness of her grace, uh, in those human virtues and natural virtues, we see the goodness of the parents from whom she received her nature and who by their good example and wise and loving service as educators taught their young daughter Mary the beginnings of holiness by teaching her about God and by permitting her, according to the tradition, to consecrate herself to God from a very young age Tradition has it that she, uh, through the illumination of her mind, so full of grace and free of every darkness of sin, she, at the age of three or four, had already decided to consecrate herself entirely to God. And though she was born to Joaquin and Anne when they were already old, they and their goodness in their obedience to God and their love were even willing to allow their daughter to be, so to speak, removed from their lives in an immediate sense as she was accepted into the temple to become, uh, to be formed there among the privileged daughters of Israel. And so they showed heroic generosity in making this sacrifice because they understood that it was a great grace that their daughter should be consecrated. They show their humble obedience to God's will. Of course, parents always find it difficult to be separated from a child when they go off to college or get married or whatever. Uh, but at such a young age, it took great obedience to the will of God. They showed wise discernment in recognizing 
Mary's vocation and their loving service as educators to allow her to go to where she could be uh, receive the best formation in, in the doctrine of uh, Israel that led, of course, to uh, the realization of her calling as, as the mother of God. She was prepared when the angel spoke to her. She knew the scripture and she knew that the time had come. And though she couldn't believe that, she couldn't see how in her humility she, she would be the one, but she accepted God's will. And she learned this kind of humble obedience from her parents. So with all this, Joaquin and Anne show themselves to be not only worthy parents of the singular, most holy of all of God's creation, they themselves were recipients of a singular grace to be the parents of this mother and the grandparents of Jesus, the Savior of mankind. And so they are, for us, benefactors and examples of holy parenthood. What they exemplify for all parents then is the need to be wise stewards of the children that the Lord entrusts to them and to favor in every way possible the formation of their children uh, as good Christians to favor their supernatural well-being and their salvation above every uh, material interest or concern to instill in children virtues and to favor those conditions that allow them uh, to remain in grace. Uh, these days, there are many distractions that the world offers and it's always rather sad to see Christian families uh, spending their leisure time in ways that really don't favor their salvation and, and at times could even jeopardize. Many people make it their goal to make it to Disneyland or Disney World, but I'd say the kind of uh, pleasure that Disneyland represents is hardly compatible with uh, a good use of one's time uh, if salvation is the, is the goal. There is glorified uh, materialistic pleasure without reference to God or eternity and a dangerous obsession or fascination with magic. These are not necessarily things that help a soul get close to God. So let's look to Joachim and Anne as examples of self-sacrifice, of obedience, of humility, these things that they passed on naturally to the Blessed Virgin Mary who in her uh, immaculate fullness of grace then was able to take and magnify and perfect beyond our understanding. May Saint Joachim and Anne intercede for all families and parents so that uh, we can all imitate their singularness in devotion to God. Praise be Jesus and Mary.